most of the non-native speakers have one problem. When they are speaking with native speaker who is fluent and confident, they lose their own confidence. They get frozen. They get terrified. They forget the words. They forget the sentences, and they don't remember what they speak. If this is your problem, dear friends, then I will give you a five-step process. If you follow this five-step process, you will be able to speak with fluent and confident speakers in a fluent and confident way. Watch this video till the end. At the last, I will give you the most important tip to convert this theory into practicals. Let's start. Well, dear friends, I run one course called English Communication and Confidence Therapy. In this course, there are many students who ask me this question. That sir, I cannot speak with a fluent speaker. I lose my confidence. I get nervous. What to do? Apart from that, there are many comments, hundreds of comments. They tell me students ask me that sir, I am not good in English, and how to speak with a fluent speaker? Because to improve your communication, your confidence, you have to communicate with a person who is fluent than you. How to do that? I get nervous. Well, as I said, I will give you a five-step process. Follow this five-step process and see the results. You will see a big change in you. This has happened with my thousands of students. They have felt a great change in their in the way they deal with these peoples. First step, as I always say, it's all about your mindset. In fact, I believe that communication is 80% of psychology and 20% of English, and that English can be developed with proper English habits. If you want to know which are those habits, go in the description. I have given links of those videos where you can develop those habits. That is 20%. But let us talk about the 80%. That is the number one point. The number one point is your right mindset. Get your thoughts right. So you have to change your beliefs about English. What I mean to say is you have to change your beliefs about making mistakes. Now understand one thing. You are not good in English. You are not fluent. This does not mean that you are not intelligent or you are not a worthy person. It has nothing to do with that. In fact, there are many people who are not fluent but very intelligent. So what happens is in our in our mind we have a belief system which tells you that oh you are not good in English, therefore you are inferior to the person who is fluent than you. Forget this. Delete this. This is not reality. In fact, the fact of the matter is, there are many people who are not fluent, but very intelligent and successful. On the contrary, there are many people who are fluent, but not intelligent. English is only a language. Remember my sentence: English is a language to express your ideas, and it's it's not like any art which has to be mastered. First, this belief you have to inculcate in your mind let's move ahead to the step number 2 most of the people what they do is when they find or when they see a fluent speaker confident speaker they avoid them they run away from the situation they run away from the place and that is the biggest mistake they are doing step number 2 do not avoid such people go and talk to them face your fear now what happens is this we don't do that we avoid that and what you avoid controls you what controls you create fear in you therefore the best way to deal with the fear is not to avoid but to face the fear you have to face the fear when you face the fear the fear will go but when you avoid the fear the fear will grow second step is now go and find fluent speakers confident speakers around you don't avoid them talk to them well it may happen that when they see your english i mean when they see like you are not good in english they may change to the another language your language your mother tongue language or they will say like uh, are you comfortable with english or should i you just tell yeah i i'm not good in english but i want to talk to you in english so please support me of course the person will not deny he will support you and he will speak with you 
This is the step number two, very important. Step number three, fake it till you make it. Well, what I want to say is this. When you're talking to a confident speaker, you are nervous. I accept it. Everyone gets nervous. It's very normal. Now what to do? Change your body language. That is, fake it till you make it. What I want to say is this. See, I'm not saying that you fake or you cheat that person. No, no, no. You cheat your brain actually. You pretend to be confident. Your body language should be confident. Your eye contact must be there. You must stand erect. You must look into the eyes. Your shoulder must be facing an open body language. You must face the person. You should not avoid. Now, due to this, what happens? Your brain gets tricked and your brain actually feels that you are confident and you will feel more confident. That is, fake it till you make it. This, this helps in two ways, of course. This helps you also. You will feel, feel more confident and also the other person also feels like, oh, he's confident. Understand one thing. While speaking in English, your confidence is very important than your vocabulary or your English. And confidence is reflected through verbal and non-verbal. In fact, non-verbal are nearly 93%. Non-verbal means your body language, your eye contact, your, your the way your pitch of voice goes up and down. I have seen in interviews, there are many people who are fluent in English but not confident. On the other side, there are some people or many people I have seen who are average in English but very confident. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, uh, a link I have given you here. Watch that video and it will explain you how to be confident during the interviews. Well, this is the third step. Fourth step is also equally important, very important. And the fourth step is take some breathing space. Take some breathing space. Now, listen what I want to say is this. See, what happens is, as I said, like, uh, first of all, you go and meet the person, okay? You introduce yourself to the person, like, hi, my name is Sandeep Patil. I'm communication and confidence coach. Okay, then, you are nervous, I understand. Then, take some breathing space. We get nervous. Now, to calm down that nervousness, you should sit quiet and relax. But how to do that? Yeah by asking that person some questions. So ask that person open-ended questions. Now, what is open-ended question? Open-ended question means it does not have only yes and no answer. There are some questions like who are closed-ended questions, like that dead end. Like, okay, uh, which cricketer do you like? Okay, he will say Virat Kohli or whatever it is. Finished. No. Ask a question which is open-ended, where the person will speak more about that question more about that particular uh, answer. Like, let me explain you. Uh, well, what do you think about IPL? This year, who will win? Then he will speak about. Well, I think this year, this team will win. Okay, open-ended questions are there. Now, don't stop here. Ask more questions on that. Okay, like these are called as WH questions. Means who, why, where, what, when, this kind of questions. Like in this case, you can ask, why do you think like this thing will win? He will explain it, okay? He will speak for one or two minutes. Now you are getting, getting the breathing space. During that time, you had to watch yourself talk. You had to watch your breathing. Your breathing will be shallow. Make it deep and slow. This will calm you down. You can ask more questions. Of course, be sure that that area of question, the, the questions you are asking is the area of his interest. Otherwise, he will not speak. He will, he will not be interested in the conversation. This was fourth, step number four. Last step, very important also. Last step, very important. Step number five. You have to be a good listener. Be a good listener. A good listener means attentive listener. Attentive listener means what? A person who listens to understand and not to respond. Listen to understand and not to respond. Listen carefully. Listen with interest. Listen to understand what he is saying. And when you listen to what he is saying, he will like it. Because P 
people love to speak to those who listen to them. And when that fluent speaker understands that, yeah, you are having real genuine interest, he will speak more. Now, after listening, as I said, you can ask sub questions, more questions about that topic. Like you can say, what do you feel about this team? This team, uh, this year, they will do better. I think so. What's your opinion? Now, in this way, you will be able to continue the conversation and the conversation will go on for a long time. Now, what will happen due to this? Due to this, you will feel, ner will, will feel less nervous. You will feel calm. You will feel relaxed. Now, the last tip which I'm going to give you, that's I call it as the theory into practicals. Watching my video is not going to solve the problem. Your problem will be solved only when you take action, take massive action. What I mean to say is, don't just watch the video, go and implement it. I repeat again, five steps are there. Number one step, change your beliefs about English. You are not good in English. This does not mean that you are not intelligent or successful. Number two, do not avoid these people. Face them. Number three, fake it till you make it. Number four, very important, ask questions. Take some breathing space. Buy some breathing space. Number five, be a good listener so that you can ask more questions. And the last point I told you, actions without actions no results well friends i hope you like this video and i'm sure you're going to implement this in your real life in the comments tell me which of these points you like the most which of these five steps which you like the most of course these five steps must be implemented at one time at one time but still i want to know which of these you like the most Thanks for watching the video. I'm there on all the social media. You can go there and watch my short videos which will explain you more about all these things. Thanks friends for watching and goodbye.